Hello and good evening, everyone. It is your good friend, Mr. Eric Norton, and I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Paul Jennis. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great, Eric. I'm so happy to have you here with me. Before we get to, to the interview portion of the show, I need to mention that tonight's show is brought to you by Filth Bomb Breaks and Pastime Marketplace. Make sure you head over to PastimeMarketplace.com and get yourself 15% off of your order at checkout when you use code Beckett Live. All right. Uh, that was a quick introduction there. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to introduce yourself here, sir. Um, as people might say, who in the world is Paul Jennis? And why is he on Beckett Live Presents tonight? Why don't you lay that out for us, sir? Okay. Um, well, do you want me to talk in terms of how I, the, the sports world or just a little bit about just, the, just a little bit about your background and your history? Yeah. I started off as a uh, New York illustrator. Uh, did a lot of uh, illustrations for book covers, uh, magazines. Uh, did a lot of work for Golf Magazine. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a little bit of sports back then. Um, from there, I went into the uh, collectible industry of uh, plates, uh, and um, for a while, I was doing stuff for the Bradford Exchange with Gone with the Wind. Um, eventually, from there, I trended towards um, fine art portraits and um, and murals too for hospitals and churches. Uh, and slowly uh, evolved into, um, I love sports, and I was able to uh, get involved with doing these uh, top baseball cards, uh, the artwork. I was so used to as a kid just collecting them. I, I don't know if they had them the more of the art back then, but I remember more of the standard photographs. Uh, mm -hmm. so I'm excited to you know be a part of the, their group, and uh, um, that's been a lot of fun. Great project. You know, Tops does a lot. Has been doing some great things with artists this year. Uh, obviously, the project twenty twenty that's going on, but these cards that you're working on as well are beautiful. I want to step back though, because you, you you mentioned the Bradford Exchange and Gone with the Wind. I was telling you off air that uh, my grandmother, God rest her soul, was a just a big Gone with the Wind fan. And I'm going to bring up some of your uh, images here to see in just a moment. But tell me how you got hooked up with that and. Sure. Did you, did, you, did you paint directly on the plate? No. Okay. So this is how uh, it works. I, I was represented uh, for a while uh, by an agency in uh, Manhattan. Um, and I would do um, a lot of um, images uh, for the Bradford Exchange of different movies and um, what they do is they test them out and if they test well, they go into production. So it took a while, uh, you know, after a couple of years after I left the agency, they contacted me and said, uh, you know, uh, Paul, we'd uh, like you to try doing Gone with the Wind. And um, I hadn't seen the movie yet. And I depicted the scene they wanted and the lighting that I wanted. And I was competing with like four or five other top artists. And because I didn't see the movie, I lit it in a little more unique, warm light. And um, the president of the company loved it. And that became uh, a three-year project and a couple other projects eventually with the Franklin Mint. Um, so uh, that's that's how they got a hold of me, for, uh, you know, to, to do the uh, project. So have you since seen the movie? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I learned. <laughs> I learned very quickly to. Uh, I went. I used to go to these shows, um, convention type things, and people. I would sign the plates for them, and um, they ask you questions, um, you know, about the movie. So I made sure I saw the movie quite a few times, and uh, yeah, I, I did. So a uh, little inside secret here. No one knows this, I don't think, uh, except for everybody who's watching and listening right now. The very first time I had a situation like this for myself, I was asked to interview the cast for Slapshot. And I had never seen Slapshot. I, and this was like, hey, do you want to interview the cast, the living cast with Slapshot? Uh, you'll, be need, you'll need to be ready to go in 10 minutes. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll do that. Uh, I had never seen the movie. I had, I knew enough about the movie to be dangerous. And I, I finished the interview 
and everything went fine and uh, everything we all we all had a good time and a lot of laughs. But I totally set myself up for failure, but came through on the other end. All right, so this is one of the images of, of Gone with the Wind here. Uh, is this Gone with the Wind? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, which which one was it in the certain light that you did? Can you, can you okay, so there's one with I think there's curtains behind them. They're in a clinch scene. Uh, no, that was the uh, second. Keep going. Uh, Look at her. That, yeah, that's it. Okay. That one, yeah. So in the original scene in the movie, it was lit with a – it was, it was a boring shot. It was um, very pale, greenish kind of light, and uh, I think that helped a lot, the fact that I didn't see the movie. It was – so I was telling you again, this is one of my grandmother's favorite movie. I And I know a little bit about this stuff because it's when um, my, my grandmother would tell me these things. Clark Gable did not like her so much that he used to eat onions before scenes like this. Oh my so, God. so when they, he like, he, he, he couldn't stand her. So he would eat onions purposely to have bad breath. And it was a, a great thing <laughs> to know that. He was just messing her with, with her like on, on these on these scenes. Um, so they picked you, and you did. You had a three year run. How many plates do you think you did? Uh, I did twenty four plates um, with two different series, and um, yeah, I ran well for a couple of years. They were in. It was it was pretty incredible the promotion on it. It was uh, they had a TV commercial. It was in every major magazine. So it really gave me a, kind of an intro into the um, art world, collectible world, uh, especially the Bradford Exchange and the plate industry. That was a that's a pretty big deal, or was more so back then. I don't know if it's uh, quite been the same uh, now, but uh, it was great, great project. Loved it. Um, did some shows with it. I used to travel around to these shows with, um, I don't know if your people will know this, Thomas Kincaid, he's, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So we, uh, we would, um, you know, he, he was pretty well known and, uh, kind, you know, famous even at that time. And, uh, uh, he, he was nice. He, uh, kind of introduced me a little to that world too. So one, one thing I know that, you know, you know, there's a lot of money in sports cards. But there's even a lot more money in, in art, and I, I, I'm a guessing. I'm guessing that these shows that you went to, it was kind of a kind of a a, a special kind of crowd. Is that is that a fair way to say it? Yes. Um, <laughs> let's face it. It was the majority. No, I mean there were a couple men, but the majority were w women. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, collectors. Uh, I did end up selling quite a few originals uh, over the years uh, from that. Um, but I'm curious to see what the sports uh, world brings to me. I don't, uh, you know, I, I know a little bit about it. I, like I said, I collected the cards as a kid, but I am now seeing, like you said, they did a project 2020 and there's some other art, uh, pieces going out there. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm hoping to really expand in this area. You know, it's uh, something that I do want to talk about. And before we do that, though, I want to share this little video clip that you, that you sent over to the sure. team. It's it's a one minute video clip. I got to get it loaded, so we'll, we'll we'll make a little time here while we get this loaded up. But uh, so this, first of all, for for not having for not knowing having a great knowledge of modern baseball players, and I think that's fair to say because you and I talked about that. You did absolutely a wonderful job with the with the subjects that you've uh, printed so far, uh, painted so far. Uh, not it did not know any help a little bit because there weren't bigger expectations. Is that fair to say, or did you have to do a little research before you came up with uh, with who you the subjects you put down? Um, oh no, I uh, first of all when I go through the uh, the photos, the extension, there's a lot of research that goes into making sure that I, I pick the right ones. And, uh, it's great that they have, um, you know, the, the rights to these photos. Cause otherwise, uh, you know, artists don't get to just, you know, take these, 
you know, photos and make it into art. Um, I've been working there with a great uh, art director who gives me tons of freedom um, and also great suggestions. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I, I look at them carefully. I make sure, uh, you know, the swings, whatever they're known for, the expressions, the, um, you know, do I look up their specific batting average and things like that? No, not necessarily, but most of the guys – uh, that I've done so far. There are a lot of newer guys, but uh, I think Ken Griffey was uh, mm -hmm. yeah. this. And so, yeah, so I'm, a, you know, I'm a little more familiar with some of them. Uh, sure. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, uh, before you bring that piece, one of the things uh, that I had done before I, I did the Aaron Judge uh, to give myself a sample piece into the sports world was I had done a uh, large painting of Odell Beckham Jr. Mm -hmm. And um, I, what I did is that I, I brought that in the tops to show them, um, you know, what type of work I did. And they were like, they were really impressed. And, and uh, I don't know if you can, you can bring that up later or whatever on the scene. I got it right. I got it right here. We'll talk about it right now since you talked about it. Okay, this is, this is a wonderful piece, actually, and I could feel, I could see your New Jersey, New York, uh, New York love here in this piece. So yeah, uh, yeah. So, so this is the. These are really a little more high end uh, portraits that take me up to three months, um, and they're they're a lot much larger than the tops one. I could never do this for for tops because of, I mean, the size wise, but. What I did was eventually I, I, I went and I said to them, I said, let me try a sample with Aaron Judge doing this whole idea of game within a game. Well, you can see here, I, that's exactly what I had done, mm -hmm. you know, which might have given them the idea to say, hey, let's run with that idea with the tops cards. Um, so um, – they saw the quality of this, and then I did the Aaron Judge painting, which uh, is a, is probably twice the size, or maybe even four times the size of the or other originals. But I still couldn't get that down to a fast enough time, and then I ended up being able to paint them uh, a little smaller than that, and it, it worked for both of us, both Tops and me. It became something that I could do, you know, that would work for them and work for me. So uh, that was the evolution, though. That this piece here is what uh and i got that to him um that was an interesting thing i got that to him through his chiropractor <laughs> I, I still have the original i don't want to get too much into the story he flipped over when he saw it he wanted to buy it for his mom until he saw the price on it yeah <laughs> uh, it was a very expensive piece i hadn't really settled on the piece uh price piece then but um then everything happened bad with the Giants, and he ended up leaving, and I uh, took it back. So I didn't go any further with it. That's funny. <laughs> Everybody wants something until they see the price tag, right? <laughs> right. right. Well, um, the ones that I'm doing for Tops are much more reasonable. Uh, and if people are interested in the originals, they can see them on the uh, the website there. The originals are I, – I know it, I'm saying it's reasonable. It's still $5,000. Uh, but it is an oil painting, and you're paying for my experience, and there's still a lot of time to put it to put into it. Understandable. So I'm going to show this first, this this clip here, guys. Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, what's up, guys? How, thanks for jumping in tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, so what's going to happen here, uh, Carl? Good good evening. Is our mics are going to go? Are going our mics are going to mute while this video plays, and then we're going to come back on the other end and talk about this amazing Aaron Judge piece and the rest of your uh, tops work, okay? Great. All right, one second. Let's hit that play button.
beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Carl says quality is priceless. He says, wow. I know, right? That's that's amazing stuff. I can't believe that he uh, that that well, I you know the reason I can't believe it, Paul, is because I am not that artistic. I don't have that in me at all. What what in the first question, actually, I posted that video yesterday on my social media. And the first question I got was how long did that take? Okay. So the actual piece itself, that Aaron Judge piece, 60 hours to 60 seconds. That's what I tried to do. So that's 60 hours of work into 60 seconds. And it's the first time I did anything with video work. And it was very hard to paint that way because I'm trying to uh, go from left to right and leave the viewer space to see how it's creating. So sometimes you have to contort a little because you, you want to make sure they can see what's going on there. But I, I love that whole process. And I was really pleased with the uh with the way it turned out it, it's amazing then my, my second comment is that that piece of music behind it is is wonderful what was that oh gosh i think it's a tchaikovsky piece uh, of some kind i i uh, grew up on classical music uh with my parents and it was a piece i always uh there was a section in there that i i said you know i think this might work out for this piece and it and it did, so I was happy. Yeah, it, it, it worked. It fit perfectly. So congratulations on all fronts there. Uh, you. As as you are, are just heading off into new new directions for you, and I say new directions because again, uh, you, the stuff that I that you've shared that I've seen is, is not a whole lot of sports. And you know, you're you're you basically auditioned for tops with the Odell Beckham Jr. Right and here, you are selected with this project. Do you find this intimidating at all, not having a huge knowledge of modern sport? Um, no, I mean, I look, I, I do watch a lot of sports. I'm just um, uh, statistic-wise, I'm not mm. one who who looks at, uh, you know, all the stats. But, you know, I watch the playoff games. I watched LeBron the other day with the, the Lakers. I'll turn on the playoffs mostly in the baseball uh, on the regular season, I'll just tune in. I'll surf, uh, you know, and watch. But no, I, I still know them. I not as well. I mean, a lot of the people that they introduced to me this year was uh, a, a little new to me. But uh, um, the you know the intimidating part is just um, getting used to this whole world uh, that you're involved with and Beckett Media. Uh, you, you don't realize. Um, you know how and look the tops has been around for i don't know i'm asking you it's it's been all around for 100 years i don't yeah, know since the since the late 40s early 50s i believe that's, that's oh, right. okay. Yeah. okay so it's it's been around a long time and uh i think it's here to stay it seems from what i hear that the collectible industry has been hotter than ever so uh even during this whole uh, pandemic time, uh, it's still, you know, people are still interested. You know, they're. I, I I didn't mean I didn't want to insult you, but I phrased the question the way I did because I wanted to show this Fernando Tatis Jr. piece. Okay, because he is very 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 new on the scene, right? He was a rookie last year. Right. He, he's he's killing. I don't know if they won today or not. I don't maybe not, but you know they're they were in the play the playoffs. And the, the reason I ask is because uh, these these subjects are, are fairly new to the scene in sports, and I was wondering if you got to pick them or if Tops help you select uh, the subjects. That's totally Tops. Okay. Uh, I wish I could get to pick them. I picked, you know, some of my uh, favorite old old timers uh, in there, but uh, no, they have their own strategy there, and I just I. I assume they know what they're doing, and I just <laughs> I, I I take um, you know I do take orders from them. Look, I grew up as a an illustrator, and uh, you know your client is your client, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't mind. Uh, and and look, it gives me a chance to learn a, a little bit about each one of them. They're one of the guys I did, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about this. Um, let me get. Uh, okay, his name Louise Rob Robert. Yeah, uh, he is. 
a strikeout king. I, I'm just kidding. He, he, he's a great. He was a great rookie. Uh, he was, his rookie season was this season. I think he's going to finish second to uh, rookie in the year voting to probably Kyle Lewis out of out, out of Seattle. But uh, Luis Robert is a, a great name in sports right now. A lot of hype behind him. So uh, if he if he's on your docket, uh, that's going to be a very popular piece. Well, that's why I was going to. He was on the docket, and. Uh... What surprised me, so I, I look at the end, the card numbers, the amount of sales on that, and he was he was double everybody else. Yes. And so I was I was like, whoa, what, who is he? And, you know, so that's interesting that you, you said that about him. Um, yeah. He is uh, on top of the card collecting world right now. Uh, so it, it's nuts to see. Before we get too far off on a tangent on that, uh, uh, Mr. Carl wanted to know, what kind of oil and canvas would you recommend to someone starting out? Okay. Um, I like the cotton can canvases better because if uh, they, they, they hold the paint better. A lot of people, uh, the old masters used to use more of the linen. Um, and the problem with the linen ones is if, if they ever don't get as tight or they have a dimple in them, you can't fix it. it. It it stays that way. Whereas the cotton ones, um, they're more resilient uh, over the years. And as far as uh, my paints, they they are Windsor Newton Professional Oil paints. I've been painting with them since I was seven. Since you were seven, so that, I you know what I didn't ask that. I was gonna ask like, when did you start this journey in art? You said seven. Is that is that yeah? Wow. <laughs> um, you know what happened is. Uh, it's interesting uh, for, for parents out there where they, one of the teachers wrote a note to my parents and said, you know, your, your son shows a lot of promise in the art area. You should explore that. And uh, that they did. They were people who always went to museums and things. And so I started that at an early age and all my the schooling and presents and things were always related to uh, art. And uh, um, that's how it, it kind of began all through high school and college. And um, it was, it was all, you know, it was true love of mine. I, I, I don't, I don't even consider it work work. I, I just love doing it. So I, it's a privilege to get to paint this stuff. So I, I don't, when I ask you this question, I don't mean disrespect, but have you ever had a real job or is this, has this always been what you've done? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. This is more of what I've done as a, as a kid. I ha I did. I mean, as a kid, mm -hmm. I, I did landscaping work and, uh, you know, counselor stuff and, uh, uh, used to work for a drugstore and stuff like that. But no, as a, as an adult, this was something I, uh, you know, I uh, started right out of college. Uh, I was lucky to get involved with this agency who said, look, uh, your work's great. But and I my work was pretty, pretty good back then. But they said, you, another five years, we would take you on. And I was, wow. I said, <laughs> five years? You're kidding me. They said, but look, well, if you intern with our group, for a year, we'll represent you after the year. So I did that, and that was an entree for me into becoming uh, involved with the uh, New York illustration. So, uh, so what did you start with then? Like during that internship? I mean, I'm obviously okay. you weren't, if you weren't yeah. painting Bo Bichette, no. what were you doing? <laughs> no, so so I uh, first, I mean, part of my jo uh, job description was I was an office manager. I would. Uh, organize things i would deliver things one of the great things i got to do was um i would do uh, corrections on all kinds of things like movie posters and uh, uh book covers they'd say hey paul can you uh bring this home tonight and uh you know fix this up and fix that up and they would pay me way more than they were paying me <laughs> as an as a office manager and intern and I began to get a good reputation after a while, and then they re represented to me. But that was, uh, I mean, that world was incredible. We would, uh, I would get a job. Um, 
I think we had done movie comps for the movie Risky Business back then. <laughs> um, and I got to do little things on that. And once I, they said, hey, look, overnight, you got to do, I forget the band. It was a big, um, big band in Boston at the time. Uh, they wanted it overnight for me to paint a something they would blow up on a f huge billboard, and uh, and I and I did it overnight, and they paid me real well, and I said this is great. So, <laughs> um, so I, I the illustration world is is where I really learned uh, you know how to uh, adapt to clients, uh, how to deal with art directors, uh, how to negotiate. Um, you know all the business aspects, which are very important in the in this art field. Uh, the talent uh, is great to have, but if you don't have the business acumen, you'll you you won't make it out here. <laughs> it just it really is. It's that competitive. It's a hard knock life out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, that part. A lot of artists don't want to don't explore that side and or don't want to you know be that business like i enjoy it um i enjoy the promotion of my work the graphic uh you know putting the stuff on my uh, websites and stuff like that so i enjoy all aspects i want to stop just for a minute uh, stop talking about sports and talk about this this portrait here this is just really really cool to me uh these are, are New Jersey State Supreme Court justices, is that correct? Yes. Um, okay, so this, the first one I did was um, was a woman named, it was the first New Jersey Supreme Court judge uh, named Marie Garibaldi. Okay. Um, okay, so the, the way that I eventually got around to this was um, I had done, okay, uh, I had done, I got a call to do, come in to try out for a portrait of the Governor Cody, who had taken over New Jersey Governor McGreevy's job. Um, and so I met with him and I ended up doing his official portrait for New Jersey. And that kind of gave me um, the leeway into getting these Supreme Court judges uh uh, having that exposure uh, at that level was a, a great entree into that world. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what more I could say on that. But, yeah, I did two. I can't remember <laughs> his, uh, his name. Stu, Stu Pollock. Yes, Judge Stu Pollock. Uh, great guy. I've maintained a friendship with him. Uh, you know, I just great company. Um, you know, it, it's an interesting life. You do get to meet a lot of interesting people. I'm hoping to do that a little bit with the sports world once this virus thing gets, you know, out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. We all hope to do something, right, once this virus gets right. out of the way. So uh, I have to ask, though, uh, with a honorable, honorable position like this and an esteemed position as a Supreme Court justice uh, for New Jersey, what was his initial reaction when he saw this? Oh, he uh, he loved it. Um, this was a tough deal because, um, I, look, sometimes the first judge I did, she had just passed away, so we had to deal with whatever photographs were done. Mm -hmm. he, he was a little bit older at the time, so we had to find a way through some, uh, you know, I took photographs of him, and then I, I did some work in Photoshop to – kind of make him look a little bit younger. Um, and uh, he loved it a lot. Uh, the funny one was with Governor Cody. He came over my house with his, uh, the state trooper who uh, who comes along with him. And uh, he goes to him, what do you think? What do you think? He goes, oh, yeah, it looks just like you, boss, or whatever. I'm like, that's a, that's a nerve-wracking moment. <laughs> Um, because you never know how a client's going to be. Uh, I did one of a championship horse, um, Malabar, Malabar Man, uh, who won the Hamiltonian. Um, he was owned uh, by uh, Mal Burroughs, a very wealthy gentleman who actually uh, rode the harness uh, with the horse. 
And uh, when he came over, I had the uh, painting of the horse on a fireplace and he paced back and forth. And I was like, oh God, does he like it? Does he like it? And uh, he, he turned around, he looked at me, he goes, you got, you got the eye, you caught it. You caught what I saw, the, the winner in him when I picked him. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a big, uh, that's a big relief uh, release there. And actually, at least to this next question from the audience, Carl wants to know, does the passion ease the pressure when doing such pieces? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my goal when, when I'm doing, whether it's a sports player or a portrait of a judge, you want to capture the essence, the soul of the person. Yes, there is a little bit of a stylization to this particular uh, artwork, but but in reality, what I look for is the character, what the nuances, the things that make the, these people, these people, whether it be something in the eyebrow, something in in the corner of the mouth. I'm not the kind of guy where it's, a stylized piece and it's like it, that's all um, just made superficial looking it's it's a very flowery kind of painterly piece with without getting into my my goal is to get into the essence of of each individual that's every time and if I do that then I know uh, you know that that I've accomplished a good painting Actually, well, that actually leads right into the next question here. Uh, have you ever had to change something about a likeness of a, a, a piece afterwards? Okay. Or so in the process. Yeah. Um, look, when I was doing Gone with the Wind, um, at the time, Ted Turner owned the rights to it. Uh, I was called in New York uh, to change the eyelashes on Scarlet. Wow. And I was, whoa, okay. I said, look, whatever you want, I'll do, but it's going to reduce down the size of a 32 of an inch. <laughs> so, so I don't know if it's going to make much difference, but if you want it done, I'll, I'll do it. So, yes, I have. There have been times when I have had made uh, some portraits um, prettier. Uh, if somebody's asking me to do that, that usually doesn't work out well because uh, one parent loves the fact that they're you're enhancing them. The other's like, where's my kid? <laughs> mm, I got you. That makes sense. Uh, Shannon wants to know, who are some of your inspirations and do you collect their work? Um, I Look, my, my inspirations are more of, the old masters. I wish I could collect their work. <laughs> there are the people like uh, Rembrandt, Sargent. Um, uh, can't. Oh yeah, there's a there's a guy called Bougereau. I I don't know if your audience will know him or not. Incredible portrait artist. Um, I was taught by some really good people outside of the college experience. There was a school in New York called the Art Students League, and they had some incredible uh, teachers there that were just amazing, amazing uh, artists. It's you know, I, it's funny that we're talking about art. Last night we were talking about a pair of uh, <laughs> a pair of prototype Michael Jordan Air Ones, and we we were saying being in front of those and seeing them was like being in front of the Mona Lisa. Is this your interpretation of the Mona yes. Lisa? Yes, it is. I, I, I spent a long, long time on that. Uh, my goal was again, to get into not my so much. I mean, there's a little bit of my interpretation of it. Look, the original right now, uh, most of the colors are gone. Mm -hmm. So the original is not looking that great right now, but, um, what I tried to do is get into the artist's head. I, I did four of them there. One was this Bougereau I talked about, and one was a Renoir, and the other um, was a Vermeer. And each one is painted in different styles. So you really have to understand um, uh, at a very high level how people, how the artists paint these things. Uh, you know, from a really classical traditional painting method 
than just say, oh, I'm going to, you know, like the guy who goes in the museum and does a quick copy of one of those pieces. Uh, and everybody goes, oh, wow, these are really detailed pieces to really get into the, uh, yeah, you can see, you can see how pale the colors mm -hmm. are. Now, I think they have some enhanced versions of, of that now, but uh, um, so that was my goal with that piece to show people, and you know what? When I did all four of those as masters, I learned so much. That's all you can really ask for, right? Is to, is to learn something from it. Right. That's well, awesome. That's, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, I was gonna had a comment. We had a comment here. Steven said, uh, I've learned that it's usually better to tell the artist what you want in general terms and allow them to determine how the piece looks in specific terms. It seems like the more freedom you give the artist in doing a piece, the better piece, the better the piece typically comes out. Do you, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, he's totally correct. Um, that, you know, it's hard because you don't, you, you do get a lot of people over the course of my career who want to control it in a way and they're not open to input. And when you, you're not open to the input and then it comes out not looking so great, you want to say, well, what? That's my Bruce piece. I, I'm a big Bruce fan, <laughs> New Jersey. We understand. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so yes, when I get the freedom, that is that's icing on the cake. Uh, if you if you don't mind, can I can I take a moment here and do a do a a, a proud pop, a proud father plug? Is that okay with you? Sure. Uh, so and we we talked about this uh, last week. We had an artist panel on of uh, ne ne for the Negro. Leagues Baseball Museum, uh, and they were to have this artist project. It's the 100 year uh, anniversary of uh, the Negro Baseball Leagues. And during that interview, my son, who is 10, uh, created or he drew a piece for of Cool Papa Bell, and he wanted to help contribute. And basically, what what the uh, what the organizer said is, "Hey, if you allow this, we will let this be piece number 100 in the exhibit." Wow. And I, I said, yes, absolutely, please. Now, keep in mind, uh, my my son is ten, so uh, he 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 did this while we were chatting, and I I'm just really proud of him. And this is available right now, up for auction. Uh, all everything goes to benefit the uh, Negro League uh, Baseball Museum, uh, and it's currently up for auction right now. It's at it's at one hundred and three dollars. I didn't know wow. how much I didn't know how much we would. Uh, uh, that's great. Uh, yeah. That's but, great to hear. That looks great. It looks I, great. I think he did a good job for ten years old. Absolutely. So, They'll just lay it out on the field. There's almost like a perspective there of the small fans in the background. So you, there's there's uh, thinking there. It's good thinking on how to lay out the page. I, I was very impressed by it because I couldn't do it. <laughs> and uh, so I just, everybody, if you're watching, you're listening, you're watching, I just put the, if you would care to go bid on this, uh, I put the, the auction link in the comment section here. Uh, all, just remember, everything goes straight to uh, the Negro Baseball League's uh, Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, we, we're keeping none of this. This is all a donation. So please go bid if you, if you feel so inclined and you will make a 10-year-old very happy to, to be able to share this and say that, he is now uh, an artist that that sold something. I know that's a big step in, in an artist's journey, right? <laughs> that's not bad. One hundred and three dollars too for the uh, uh, ten years old. Yep, that's I, great. So uh, we mentioned the Tops twenty twenty project earlier, and since, since you're working with Tops, I wanted to ask you: Have you followed that at all? And, and what are some of your thoughts about it? If you have. Oh, uh, yeah, I have. I see it on the tweets. Um, look, they show, I, I'm glad they showcase a whole bunch of different artists, that, you know, on there. I'm more of a fan. I, I like the graphic stuff. I, I like, obviously, a little more of the traditional stuff. Not a big fan of the cartoony stuff. Um, it's okay. It's just not my particular genre. And to be quite honest with you, I, I, it's something I can't. I can't do. So it's not, you know, it's, it's just not, that's something, that's a whole different area of art. Uh, but overall it's, I think it's a great way to uh, expose a lot of artists to, uh, you know, to the baseball sports world. Yeah. I like it. 
it, it's it's been a lot of fun to follow this year, and I think that's uh, it's it's good just to bring sports art to the forefront. And who knew that 2020 was going to be that year? Out of it's, and I, I'll be quite honest with you, it's been my favorite part of 2020 is to see all this wonderful sports art come out and and people get to see it and experience it. Well, I th- I think it's great. I think it's you know it also is it adds to the photographic collections. It's nice to have um, an interpretation of uh, of the uh, different players, the portraits besides just your standard photographs. Even with the cool special effects, I think the art is makes it more personal and and even some more something to collect. Yeah, absolutely. And something else to collect because guys my age who are 40 sitting at home going, hey, I, I remember that Bo Jackson card and buying those. It might give them something else to, to think about, right? Right. Oh, oh sure. Awesome. Sure. Um, all right. So we're going to start winding down the show here. Before we, before we go, though, uh, I, I've shared your link. I'm going to share it again just because I want everybody to know uh, where to go to contact you. Now, I ask every artist that is on with me, uh, do you take commissions? And typically the answer is yes, but there's a long wait. So I'll ask you, Ms., uh, sir, do you take commissions? Yes, I absolutely take commissions. I will fit them in between the, the you know, the card commissions and the other, but I find a way to get to them. Uh, you know, so if people are interested in, in that, they should contact me right at the link to my website that you have there. Um so, uh, yeah, that would be great. I love doing it. There's that link right now in the comment section again. It's real simple, paulgenis.com. You can't really mess that up, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. So uh, I, I see most of the paintings behind you that you've done for Tops, but I, I see yeah. one back there that has not been talked about. Is that Bryce Harper? Yes. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, here, I'll bring it to the... Uh, this was the last one I just did. So very nice. Wait, there we go. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was great. I loved doing him. Uh, obviously, him I was aware of. Uh, sure. But uh, and I have a couple. I have a couple good ones left for this year coming up. Uh, and uh, it seems like tops. I mean, they've done real well with it. So we hope to continue on. So. Is this project going to run just throughout the year, or is it going to continue? Oh, to I think it's going to be continuing on from what with the feedback that we've had, uh, you know, on the cards, and we've talked about it. Uh, so my guess is yes. I don't. I don't see uh, a website for for the the tops project. Do you know what that address is? Uh, no, I do not know that. I'm sure t- it's got to be on the TOPS uh, website. So I'm going to go check it out. I don't want to get off here before we, uh, before we find that link, because this is something you said that originals are, are available, correct? Yeah. So let me just, yeah, let me tell that you, the Aaron judge is a little more expensive. It's a lot larger. It took me a lot more time. So I don't, it's on the website. It, it's somewhere, I think, around 18000 So that one is a little lot more expensive. The other ones are around 5000 My hope is to get these all signed by the players. T- Tops organization said they would work with me to try to get that done. So uh, um, I, I hope to be involved with some of the shows that come up in the next year and uh, – of, you know, recently some of the uh, collectible places in my area have contacted me. So I'm hoping to really expand, you know, a lot in this field. All right. So this is no surprise to me. I found the website and uh, a lot of these are sold out. The archive, they're sold out. This is crazy, crazy stuff. So let me get the archive link for you up there so you guys can see what uh, Mr. Genesis has done. And then I will get the... Um, the actual live one up. I see Carl posted that. Thanks, Carl. I appreciate that, sir. And then right now, currently, is is the Bryce Hopper. It's it's up yes. and available. And Bryce it has a little bit to, a little bit of time left. So I'll put that out there for you guys as well. You can check this out. Um I, that's good to know that this will continue into 2021, hopefully, because these things are amazing. You, you've done a wonderful job. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so I got the link also for your Facebook page. You're not – are you on Twitter? I am on Instagram. Uh, I am on Twitter. Uh, it's probably Paul Jenis at Twitter. Uh, I, you know what? I'll send you that information because I want to make sure I get it right. Sure. Uh, but I am on Instagram. I think it's Paul Jenis Fine Art, but uh, let me make sure, and I'll send that to you. Okay. So, guys, go check him out at pauljenis.com. You will actually find links to uh, his LinkedIn, his Instagram, and his Facebook page. And, uh, it, you know, it's a great way to contact him if, if you would like to try to commission something. Uh, the, one, the last thing that I want to say before I get out of here is your signature – uh, is awesome. How did you come up with that? It's, it's a P and a J. It's simple, but it's so elegant and, and unique. Well, okay. So <clears throat> I started signing that way years ago. Uh, and then my daughter, uh, Jennifer, who is a, um, a graphic designer, she helped bring it into uh, Illustrator to, to smooth out the curves and really polish it up. And so she helped me make it into that real cool looking thing there. Yeah. Thank I you. like it. I like it a lot. I, I wish that I was savvy enough to have something like that, but yours is uh, I will, I will, I promise I won't bite it. I won't take it. It's awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Paul, I told you I would try to get you out of here uh, a little after kickoff and that's what we're going to do uh, as we, as we go watch some football tonight. Uh, you are my last my last show of the week. I think you did a wonderful job, uh, and I, I just appreciate your time. Thank you, Eric. It was a real fun to do. I appreciate it, too. Awesome. Uh, hang, hang tight for me, sir. We'll talk a little bit backstage here. Everybody else, uh, this is going to wrap up a week that it was really cool. Next week is going to be a lot of controversy. As we have uh, – I'm going to San Antonio this weekend, and we're going to interview uh, Dustin Diamond. He played Screech on Saved by the Bell. I don't, I don't know if that's a, of any interest to anybody. We have Ben Baller and, uh, and Logan Paul next week as well. So uh, next week is controversy week. So until then, good night and God bless.